Okay, so let's jump in and give it a try solving this. Um, so I'm gonna go through this kind of step by step. I suggest that if you ever find that you uh, got lost, like you didn't do the right thing on a step, pause the video and like try to understand how to get to that point before going on because it's kind of a process, all right? Remember, to use the Lagrangian, we've got a four step process. Number one, set it up right. Number two, Take the first order conditions with respect to each variable and the Lagrange multiplier. Step three, set them all equal to zero. And step four, solve the system. Okay, so let's work through this thing step by step. Step one, if we're trying to maximize utility subject to our budget constraint, and this is the information we have, then our Lagrangian is gonna look like this. What are we trying to maximize? Utility. So we need to have that utility function. F to the 2 fifths power times S to the 3 fifths. Now we need to add in our constraints. So we add in this Lagrange multiplier and our income is 100. That's the amount we can spend. And our spending is our constraint. We need the amount of food and shelter we spend money on to equal 100. So PF is 10 times the amount of food minus one times S, which is the price of shelter. That's step one, we've set this thing up right. Step two is to take the appropriate first order conditions. So what are our choices? Food, shelter, and we also have to take a derivative with respect to the Lagrange multiplier. So let's do that. The derivative with respect to F, we have two fifths, uh, as an exponent on f, so we got to bring that out front, 2 fifths times f. We subtract off 1, we get negative 3 fifths times s to the 3 fifths. We're not done though. f also appears here, 10 times f, negative 10, and we've got a Lagrange multiplier outside, so that's negative 10 times the Lagrange multiplier. The second first order condition looks like this. We've got a 3 fifths on top of that s, so we bring that out front. We, have, we leave f alone because it's a partial derivative, so we just treat f like it's some fixed number. We subtract 1 from the 3 fifths. That gives us negative 2 fifths. We subtract the Lagrange multiplier times s, so minus lambda. Lambda is the Greek name, remember, for that symbol. Now we have to remember to take the partial derivative with respect to lambda. Lambda doesn't appear anywhere in here, so we can ignore that. It appears here, there's no exponent, so the derivative of it is one, but we have to multiply it by this term here. And instead of writing one times s, I'm just writing s now. That's step one and step two done, so let's go to step three, set these all equal to zero. That's easy. And step four, this is where a lot of people get you can, it's easy to make mistakes, so you got to be really careful. Solve the system of equations, okay? So, how do you approach this? You're going to be tempted to solve, to start here at the end, solve this equal to s, for example, and then plug that in over here. That's a perfectly, seems perfectly reasonable, but it's likely going to result in a very confusing and difficult journey. Instead, when you have these Cobb-Douglas type uh, functions, so that would be two things multiplied together with exponents to them, and we have their first order conditions, even though it seems like it would be doing something really hard that is unnecessary, it's gonna make your life a lot easier if you do this division of two equations approach. So. Let's go through that kind of carefully here. This equation can be rewritten as 2 fifths times uh, s to the 3 fifths divided by f to the 3 fifths. Notice that f was to the power of negative 3 fifths, so we can also rewrite it as 1 over f to the positive 3 fifths. And let's add lambda times 10 to both sides, so we just get 10 times lambda here. This equation can be rewritten as 3 fifths. We have f to the 2 fifths power 
divided by s to the two fifths power. By the same argument, it's to the negative two fifths here, so we can write it as one over two fifths here. And this is equal to just lambda, okay? Now, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna try and scroll here. Let's get this. I'm going to try and combine these two equations by dividing the left hand side of this equation by this ugly thing and the right hand side by lambda. I can do that because they're equal to each other. So 2 fifths divided by 3 fifths is 2 thirds. The fifths both cancel. s to the 3 fifths divided by 1 over s to the 2 fifths is just s okay how did I get that well s divided by 1 over s to the 2 fifths is the same as multiplying by s to the 2 fifths s to the 3 fifths times s to the 2 fifths is just s to the 5 fifths because we add those exponents and 5 fifths is 1 if we divide on the bottom side, we have f to the 3 fifths divided by f. We have 1 over f to the 3 fifths, and we're dividing that by f to the 2 fifths. So that's now got 1 over f to the 3 fifths times 1 over f to the 2 fifths. We add those exponents together, and we just get f. On the right-hand side, we have 10 times lambda divided by lambda. Well, the lambdas cancel out, and we just get 10. This is what I mean by this approach seems very difficult, but it makes your life easier in the long run because you go through the hard work of carefully dividing these two things out and with Cobb Douglas you always get these very simple resulting equations where all the exponents cancel out and all the complicated stuff drops away and you get something really simple like two-thirds s divided by f equals 10 and now we have this equation which isn't too complicated and then our budget constraint which is also not very complicated and that's a much easier system to solve than any than something with a lot of exponents in it all right, so where do we go from here? Well, we need to solve for, say, s. So we have 10 times f times 3 halves, okay? Or s equals so 3 halves of times 10 is 15f, okay? Let's plug that in over here. Since we have three equations and three unknowns, we're going to end up needing all the information and in all the equations. Don't plug that back in up here. That's just going in circles. And we have 100 minus 10f minus s equals 0. We can rewrite that as 100 equals 10f plus s. And then instead of s, we can write 15f. So 10f plus 15f. 10f plus 15f is equal to 25f. And if we divide, so we have basically 100 equals 25f, which implies f is equal to 4. Now we got to go back up here, and we get that s is equal to 15 times 4, or 60. And that's how we've used the Lagrangian method to go from a utility function, prices and income, to the amount of uh, food and shelter that this person is ultimately going to choose to purchase.